Okay, now let's focus in a little bit more on internal energy enthalpy for these ideal gases. Now, for ideal gases, all these properties only vary with temperature. They don't vary with pressure really at all. Now, if it's perfectly ideal, they don't at all. Um, now, when you get into non-ideal gases like water vapor or refrigerant, they definitely do vary with pressure. Um, now, when I say this is for an ideal gas, I am speaking about a gas. The specific heat will change if I have something that is even the same temperature, but is a liquid or a solid versus being a gas. So you can't use your specific heat that you get from those tables um, for a liquid or a solid. We really only see that with uh, with water, where it might change, where you might have different phases. Because typically, when we're talking about like for solids, you just get a specific heat for it as a solid. Don't get it for a liquid or a gas, because we don't typically vaporize iron. Okay, now where do we come from? How do we figure this out? Now, Jules showed all of this for us. So what he had was an experiment like this. So he had air at a high pressure on one side, and he had an evacuated cylinder on the other side. And he was wondering, like, okay, well, when the pressure suddenly drops, will there be a change in enthalpy? So the high pressure cylinder is there, vacated, and then he finally opened the valve. Now, um, the water temperature did not change when the air was released. So even though the pressure should have halved, because it's going into a second volume that's equal to size, the energy, the internal energy of the water did not change. And this is telling us that the specific heat did not matter. It was not based on the pressure. It's only based on temperature. Okay. Now, like I've said before, at low pressures and high temperatures, all real gases get pretty close to ideal gas behavior. And because of that, that means their um, specific heats are only dependent on temperature. And that's why you can look at the tables and find it for air, for oxygen, for nitrogen, all these other materials, all these other gases, um, and figure out what their internal energy is and their enthalpy is as a function of temperature. <clears throat> now, we need a reference point. And so what we do is we create something called our specific heat at zero temperature, sorry, zero pressure. This is CP naught and CV naught. And these can be acting as a reference point. And we can use those to then tabulate our internal energy and our enthalpy based on that zero pressure scenario. Now, to get these values in the table, if you actually care, it's all done through integration. So earlier I showed you that, let's see, CV is equal to DU DT um, with constant volume. And so if I want to, I can integrate that. I can figure out what my CV is by figuring out what that derivative is um, there. Or conversely, realizing that my specific heat at constant volume does change, I can do the reverse. Where I say, okay, u2 minus u1 is equal to the integral of CV, which is a function of temperature, dt. You should know how to do integral, but in this case, we don't ever give you a function for your specific heat. So typically, we just look at the tables. Like if it changes with temperature, that means go to the tables. If it's constant, then you have the easy equation where you just know that delta u is equal to CV delta t. So it's not too bad. Okay. So when it doesn't change with temperature, we're typically using what's an average specific heat. Now I won't put average in, I give it to you in problem statements, but just know that it actually is the average. And it's not perfectly accurate because if we looked at the real specific heat as it goes from one temperature to another, it might bow like this a little bit or bow like this a little bit. Um, and so when we're taking an average, we're saying, okay, between these two temperatures, it is roughly this. Now for low temperatures, around 300 Kelvin or so, um, it really doesn't vary all that much at all, and taking the average value is very, very accurate. But at higher temperatures, it can vary quite significantly, so you have to be careful with that. And the last thing is, while well, when we were trying to find the change in energy of my system, 
I do need to be careful about what kind of process I'm looking at. Um, when it comes to this relation for the internal energy, it's valid for both. It's just if I only find the change um, in internal energy for a constant pressure process, I'm leaving off that PDV portion of the energy, which enthalpy catches, and so it won't be as accurate. You'll be having an error based on your pressure and the change in volume. Okay. So I mentioned this already before. First off, go to the tables. If it gives you a temperature and it gives you a temperature change, you can go to the tables and find your internal energy and your enthalpy really easily for oxygen, for air, for a lot of the gases we'll be working with. If it doesn't give you that, or it says it's constant specific heats, then just use your CV or CP relations that are showing right here, like delta U is equal to whatever it gives you in the problem statement times the change in temperature. And for most times, these are pretty dang accurate. Um, now, you could also do integrations yourself, which was the second point I was actually talking about. Sorry, I skipped one. Um, but don't, just like, don't worry about the integrations. That's not what you're meant to do. It's inconvenient. It's meant for computerized situations, and you're not there yet. If you had some new material, if you had some new gas, it might be important for you. But for now, just use the average specific heat if it says constant specific heat, and use the tables if it says it changes with temperature, okay? So change with temperature for one. and constant for the other. So whatever it's saying to do. Okay, we're doing an example, so I'll stop there. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you all in just a bit. Bye-bye.